We're in our hometown, Lowell, Michigan, for our next adventure to make beer. Restless Viking Red Ale at our local brewery. So that should be kind of cool. Beer, it's one of the oldest beverages known to humans. There's evidence of beer in Mesopotamia and Egypt, and the Vikings, since water was unreliable, used it on their long voyages. I'm Chuck. I'm Poppins. Let's go make some beer. So we are here at uh, Big Boiler Brewing with the head brewer, Danny. And uh, how did you get started in this business? Yeah, so I've been brewing professionally about 10 years. My oldest brother was a brewer. I started home brewing with him and then ended up in Costa Rica uh, volunteering on a monkey farm, kind of backpacking, traveling Central South monkey America. Monkey farm? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of lived out of my backpack in a tent and ran into these guys uh, in an area where I was volunteering who had a brewery. Ironically, they were from the States. I asked if I could hang out with them just to see the process. They asked me to come back. Uh, on as like an intern assistant, uh, told me they pay me four dollars an hour, which is as bad as it <laughs> So let me get this straight: you're an adventure brewer who <laughs> was traveling the world. You went to a Central American country, yeah. and you said, "Hey, can I have a job?" And then you became the head brewer yeah. of some place in the jungle. On the beach in the jungle. Yes, exactly. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, this may be the first. <laughs> Brewer I've met that probably is related to a cartel. Maybe, who knows? <laughs> Danny describes herself as one of the few beardless brewers. She may have gotten her professional start in the sweltering heat and humidity of Central America, brewing over an open flame, but she is serious about standards, the process, and the science. We were immediately impressed and awed at our luck in meeting her. So here uh, we're doing a red ale for the Restless Vikings. Yeah. <laughs> red ale is known obviously for the color. It's not super hot forward just because of the climate wasn't known for, you know, growing great hops. So um, this is what they use to kind of get their color, their body, and that's what we're gonna represent here today. Roasted barley is traditional to throw in to get that color. The Munich one I lied to you. This is Munich one right here. So you have to be a bit of a mathematician to get this right? A little bit, yeah. A little bit of science there, yeah. And with that, it was time to haul in a few bags of malt, discuss a process I know very little about, adjust the temperature, make sure everything is set, and turn the hot water on. We started by dumping part of a bag of malt. Then I had to deploy my years of experience, expansive worldly knowledge, and deep professional background to stir. A lot. In fact, it seems like brewing is mostly just stirring. I hope you all appreciate all the labor I'm doing so you can enjoy a Restless Viking Red. The Irish Blessing. May the skin of the gooseberry always cover the head of your enemy. May the road rise to meet you. May the sun always be at your back and may your dinner plates be full. May you be in heaven a half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. So, we're gonna let that rest for 45 minutes. So you're taking, with this mash over here, you're taking the flavor and the water over to this tank and leaving all the hard the, the, the pieces there, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. How long is the process that we're soaking the flavor out of the grain happening over here? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna go for 45 minutes. Okay. And then we're, we're gonna um, do what's called a Gorlock. Okay. That kind of like a natural filtration. We're gonna drop through the grain bed down there, through into the grant, and then recirculate so that we're getting a nice even filtration throughout the entire Beer. So Danny was just uh, squeegeeing the floor, getting some of the excess water off, and then she suddenly just goes up the stairs and turns the water off because her ears told her that it was full. That's so what's Russell's Viking Red going to look like? Well, here's the tap handle. All of our work for today was to extract sugars that will ferment. We sprinkle hot water on the grain, which extracts sugar from the malt. Then we recirculate the liquid to extract more sugar. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and slowly 
The batch will then be boiled while hops are added for flavor, aroma, head, and to preserve freshness. After we leave, it is sent to another vessel to ferment, where yeast breaks sugar into ethanol and carbon dioxide. And this is where we go ahead and throw this up on top. Do you need? I can get you a glove too. If you want. Like an artisan. So right now we are putting in roasted hops. Is that? But we're putting it in on top, so it doesn't affect the flavor, but it gives the red ale a nice red color. Great. We're dropping. So at this stage, it's just sugar. There's no alcohol. Oh, so it's very sweet. Yep. Um, pulling our alcohol. This is how you drink It's actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> this is very sweet, and I didn't expect that. What is that taste? Caramel and sugar and wow. molasses. It is, it I don't know. It's very sweet. <laughs> it is. going to then even further boil in the kettle. And then once we move that to a fermenter and add yeast, oxygen, that's when you're, the yeast is eating the sugars to create alcohol. Oh yeah, that is, that is yeah. So we know we've got red. How dark it'll be, we'll see. So we want first running gravity, we want last running gravity, we want start of boil gravity, and we're gonna get final gravity. Yep, so I'm gonna test it on a refractometer. Um, actually, we are gonna let it cool a little bit before I throw it on here. So that's the refractometer? Yep. Measuring the change in sugar throughout the process allows brewers to calculate the alcohol by volume. Yeah, this is great, so we're gonna extract, put all the liquid back in here, and then I'm gonna do that, like, you know, fill up the grant again, and then we're gonna add our sparge water and start transferring over into the kettle. Now we focus on filtering, adding volume, and extracting even more sugar. You can see that water start to come, or the wort start to come down. Black button that you pushed earlier that you held down, up that there. Yep. yep. Just hold it down for three seconds. And now we are at the right temperature. We're ready to, to add um, our sparge water. So it said it's like an even when you see the even. Customers are showing up for their burgers. We brought it over to get boiled. And then after the boil, it's going to, how long is it gonna boil? About an hour? Yep, an hour. Then it's gonna move over to there. Yep. In about three weeks or so. Um, then we'll wash the kegs out, bring the kegs out, fill them full, and then. And then we'll have a tap party. So Danny, this has been very exciting. I've learned a lot today. Thank you for having us here. Thank you guys. Yeah. So this is Danny, I'm Chuck. I'm Poppins. Channel's Restless Viking, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the tap party. Ah.